So after my previous video about Alaska mileage plan and then my other video about British Airways Avios and then dozens and dozens of videos about Aeroplan, today I wanted to take a look at another important frequent flyer program here in Canada and that's going to be Cathay Pacific Asia Miles. What are some of the best ways to earn Asia Miles here in Canada and what are the best ways to redeem them for flights and travel in the future. If you're excited to learn more about Asia Miles, if you find this stuff interesting, then do me a quick favor and hit the like button down below. That really helps me out. It really helps YouTube to share the video with even more viewers, allowing many more of us to discover the joys of the Asia Miles program. And with that said, let's dive into it. Let's begin by talking about how to earn Asia Miles in Canada. Now, I would say that Asia Miles are somewhat simultaneously both easy to earn and difficult to earn. They're easy to earn in the sense that there's a wide range of transfer partners that you can transfer points to and earn Asia Miles in that way. But they're also difficult to earn in the sense that out of all these transfer possibilities, there are really none of them in which Asia Miles represents the best outright use case. I'll explain what I mean. You can earn Asia Miles through one of the following five programs. American Express Membership Rewards, when you transfer them at a 1 to 0 0.75 ratio. RBC Avion Points, which you can transfer at a 1 to 1 ratio. HSBC Rewards Points, which you can transfer at a ratio of 25,000 HSBC Rewards Points equals 8,000 Asia Miles. American Express US points, which you can transfer at a 1 to 1 ratio, and Marriott Bonvoy points, which you can transfer at an optimal ratio of 60,000 Bonvoy points equals 25,000 Asia miles. So it's obviously really helpful to have no less than five transfer possibilities, but if we go through each one of these transfer possibilities, we can ask the question, well, is it a good deal to transfer points to Asia miles? In the case of American Express Membership Rewards, you actually get a better transfer ratio of one to one to either Aeroplan or British Airways Avios. So those tend to be the more popular redemptions there. The same is true for RBC Avion, HSBC, American Express US, and Marriott Bonvoy points. All of them have such a wide variety of different possibilities and Asia Miles is just one of them. So that's something to be aware of. You do wanna think carefully about whether or not Asia Miles is the right program for you before transferring all your points into Asia Miles. But if you do like some of the sweet spots that we're gonna talk about later in the video, then absolutely take advantage of these five transfer partners Probably the emphasis is going to be on American Express Membership Rewards, RBC Avion, and possibly HSBC Rewards as well. One last thing to know about these transfer partners is that for the past two years, in January of each year, the Asia Miles program has put on a 10% or a 15% conversion bonus whenever you convert points from one of these transfer partners into Asia Miles. So if you aren't in a rush to earn Asia Miles, then it might make sense to wait until the next conversion bonus, possibly in January of next year, 2022, before converting your points, and that way you get an extra 10 or 15%. Now, in addition to converting points from credit card and hotel partners, the other way to earn Asia Miles here in Canada is gonna be through this credit card right here, the RBC Cathay Pacific Visa Platinum Card. You're gonna earn a total of 35,000 Asia Miles, 15,000 Asia Miles upon first purchase, 10,000 Asia Miles upon spending $6,000 in the first three months, and finally, 10,000 extra Asia miles upon renewing your card for the second year. So if you just wanted to keep the card in the first year only, then you're looking at 25,000 Asia miles instead of 35,000. One thing to note about this credit card is that there have been many reports of significant issues with the points from the card actually posting to your Asia miles account, especially if your name and your address doesn't exactly match between RBC and Cathay Pacific Asia miles. So whether you're making a new application for this card or you're making a product switch from a different RBC product, then make sure that your name and your address matches exactly to the letter between both accounts if you want your Asia Miles to post successfully. All right, now that we've talked about earning Asia Miles, let's talk about the best ways to redeem them for flights. We'll start with some of the rules and charts that you need to know, followed by the best sweet spots for actually redeeming your Asia Miles and which flights you should be looking to book. The standard redemption chart that's published on the Asia Miles website looks like this, and we're gonna take a closer look. 
Basically, it's a distance-based chart, meaning that the number of miles that you pay depends on the distance that you fly on your specified redemption. Now you'll see that it's broken down into several distance zones. Now each distance band is further broken down into different classes of service, which determines how many Asia miles you'll pay for a one-way redemption. Now there's a few more things you need to know about this chart. Number one, this chart actually only applies to flights operated entirely by Cathay Pacific themselves. If you're flying with a One World partner airline like Japan Airlines or British Airways, or Cathay Pacific's independent airline partners like Air Canada or Air New Zealand, then actually there's a different set of prices that applies. There's no published award chart for the partner redemptions, although you can generally figure out the price by adding 5,000 miles to the business class redemptions on the Cathay Pacific chart, or adding 10,000 miles to the first class redemptions on the Cathay Pacific chart, although some exceptions do apply. The other thing you need to know here is that one-way awards on Cathay Pacific Asia miles can only have a maximum of two flight segments. If you have three flight segments, that's not going to be bookable on a single one-way award. It's going to be broken up into two separate one-way awards. In addition, you're not allowed to have a stopover on a one-way award. Now, this is a change that was made in April of 2020 after too many people took advantage of having a stopover in Asia on a one-way award between North America and North America, and essentially making a pseudo round trip for the price of a one-way. So because too many people took advantage of that, they got rid of the stopover on a one-way. So now you can only have two flight segments on a one-way and at most 24 hours in between them at that intermediate connection point. And with those rules out of the way, let's take a closer look at the sweet spots. Now we're gonna be focusing for the most part at the more long haul end of the distance based award chart. So more of the long and ultra long redemption types and you'll wanna get familiar with the redemption amounts that are displayed on screen right now. To give you some context as we start talking about the sweet spots, now the program is called Asia Miles. So obviously most of the sweet spots are gonna be for traveling over to South America. Yeah, it's surprising, but that's just kind of how the program works. Now, obviously, as the name implies, the best sweet spots for Asia miles is gonna be for traveling to Asia, and in particular for flying on Cathay Pacific in business class or first class. And there's a very important but subtle reason as to why. There's many other programs out there that can book Cathay Pacific business class, but the advantage of booking with Cathay Pacific Asia Miles is that Asia Miles members get access to more availability on Cathay Pacific business class and first class compared to partner programs. This makes sense. Many airlines out there will make more seats available to their own members when booking these hotly contested business class and first class seats, and Cathay Pacific is no exception. So for example, if you're searching for a Cathay Pacific flight from Toronto to Hong Kong, you might only find two business class seats if you're using British Airways Avios or Alaska Airlines mileage plan. However, if you used Cathay Pacific Asia miles, you might actually find four business class seats because they make extra business class seats available to their own members. So if we take a look at the major routes departing from Canada, then Vancouver, Hong Kong falls into the long distance category and it would cost 70,000 Asia miles one way in business class. Toronto, Hong Kong, meanwhile, falls into the ultra long category, meaning that it would cost 85,000 Asia miles one way. Now you'll notice something interesting here. There's actually no upper limit on the number of miles you can fly under the ultra long distance category on a single one way redemption because it's just 7,501 plus miles. So as long as you don't have more than two flight segments on the one way itinerary, you could do something like Toronto to Hong Kong to Sydney or Toronto to Hong Kong to Auckland or Toronto to Hong Kong to Cape Town or even Toronto to Hong Kong to somewhere in Europe all the way on Cathay Pacific Business Class and only pay 85,000 Asia miles. That's gonna be one of the best ways to maximize the Asia miles program by combining two ultra long haul flights on the same one way itinerary under that ultra long distance zone and only paying 85,000 miles no matter where in the world you go. The same principle applies to partner airlines as well, such as Japan Airlines Business Class, which is also one of the world's leading business class products. You can fly from Vancouver to Tokyo down to Melbourne, Australia for 90,000 Asia miles. Remember, there's that extra 5,000 Asia miles for flying on a partner airline. 
Of course, we can also apply the same principle to all of the other One World airlines out there. And there's some very, very strong One World business class products like Qatar Airways Q Suites, for example. However, another potential drawback of Asia Miles is that it does impose some pretty expensive fuel surcharges on Qatar Airways and some other One World airlines such as British Airways. If you want to book Qatar Airways Q Suites, it might cost you about $500 per person for a one-way departing out of North America over to Doha and Qatar and then onwards to your final destination. Now one way to get around this would be to originate in a country whose government has regulated fuel surcharges. These include Japan, South Korea, Australia, New Zealand, and Brazil. So if you originate from one of these countries, you'll actually pay minimal fuel surcharges. And in fact, I previously had booked a trip from Tokyo to Doha to Montreal for only 90,000 Asia miles and you know 90 bucks in fees, which I thought was a very good deal. Now the sweet spots don't end with business class because obviously you can also use Asia miles to book first class as well, including some of the world's best first class experiences like Cathay Pacific first class and Japan Airlines first class. Now there are some pros and cons to consider when you're targeting a first class redemption in terms of whether to use Asia miles or whether to use another program. On one hand, Asia Miles is definitely going to be more expensive compared to some of the other mileage programs out there, like say Alaska Mileage Plan. New York to Hong Kong on Cathay Pacific First Class or New York to Tokyo on Japan Airlines First Class would cost 125,000 or 135,000 Asia Miles respectively compared to only 70,000 Alaska Miles with the Alaska program. However, you also have to consider that Asia Miles are generally easier to earn compared to Alaska Miles. Think back to those five different transfer possibilities that we talked about early on in the video. And then there's the fact that Asia Miles lets you book routings that Alaska Miles doesn't. Think back to the fact that you could do New York to Hong Kong to London the long way around on Cathay Pacific First Class if you wanted. And finally, there's a hidden little advantage when you combine a first class flight with say a business class or an economy class flight on the same one way itinerary on a mixed cabin booking. Whether that's Cathay Pacific or Japan Airlines, interesting things happen to the pricing of mixed cabin bookings and I'd encourage you to play around with the Asia Miles search engine a little bit on your own and figure that out for yourself. If you'd like some help with that sweet spot or any of the sweet spots that we talked about, check out this article on princeoftravel.com on all of the best Asia Miles sweet spots or leave a comment below in case you have any questions. Now before finishing up the video, let's talk about the Asia Miles online search engine. If you thought that Aeroplan's old online search engine was clunky and difficult to use, then you're going to have a lot of fun, or let's say not a lot of fun at all, with the Asia Miles search engine. It can handle a simple one-way search on Cathay Pacific or Japan Airlines, but anytime you're trying to put together something more complex, including if you're just trying to combine two one-way flights on a single one-way itinerary in a somewhat creative fashion, the website often glitches out and doesn't actually let you book it online. So you'll either have to call Asia Miles over the phone, or I found that their online chat service is actually pretty good about finding availability and piecing together flights into a single itinerary as well. So that can be a way to actually book some of these more complex awards. And speaking of complexity, there's actually an entirely separate award chart that you can use with Asia Miles. It's called the One World Multi-Carrier Award, and it lets you combine two or more One World Airlines and a whole bunch of destinations on the same round-the-world ticket. However, because this is the type of trip that probably won't be realistic for another couple of years into the future, we'll probably wait a little while to make a video about this sometime down the road. You can check out this article on the website if you're curious in the meantime. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you found it to be a useful overview of the Cathay Pacific Asia Miles program. It's not really the strongest program for Canadians, but it is quite accessible through a variety of different transfer partners, and it does have its fair share of redemption sweet spots. So if those sweet spots work for you, if you do travel often to Asia and you like to fly in business class, then it's definitely a program to pay attention to. Don't forget to hit the like button down below and subscribe to the Prince of Travel YouTube channel. Just click the subscribe button below the video. If you haven't already, you should join the Facebook group where we talk about traveling the world on points and maximizing our credit cards. It's a good time over there. 
Now let me know in the comments below, what do you make of the Asia Miles program? Are you going to start collecting Asia Miles now or have you redeemed them already for a business class or a first class flight? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. On the, <clears throat> on the other hand, on the other hand, Asia Miles, on the other hand, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> yeah.